Hello, welcome to CAGE. I'm Mike Steffen. Today we're going to show you the installation and setup of the brand new Shadow Blade product. Initially, out of the crate, the Shadow Blade comes prepped and ready to install on your tractor. A basic three point hitch, category two, is all you need. Once we have the Shadow Blade attached to the tractor, we'll do a simple adjustment of the lower lift arms. Let's get started. Don't forget to install these washers in between the gap on the lower lift arm. It helps to keep everything nice and tight. All three-point linkages have the option to be floating. Now this isn't what we want. We want the three-point to be as rigid as possible. So we have this pin here in the non-float position. And then it's important also to have this stabilizer arm installed and this pin in the non-float position as well. Now to install the top link, we have some loose bushings here, so beware of that. And then we're going to, I recommend installing it in this manner. Get this pin started. And then there's a washer that goes on either side of the top link. That's to help keep that bushing centered. And onto the tractor side. And we're not going to tighten this yet until we have it up and, and we adjust the height of the lower lift arms. I want to explain why we use the top three-point hole in this tractor scenario. This is a fairly large tractor, so as you can see, the lower lift arm is straight or just slightly off of parallel to the ground. This is important because if the lower lift arm is angled down too much, the shadow blade starts to drag and get pulled by snow, and that lower lift arm will raise the cutting edge. So we want this to be as straight as possible or even slightly angled up. Before we plug in the hydraulic auxiliaries on the shadow blade, we have to choose the correct auxiliary valve for the rear of the tractor. There's two different styles here. This one here, when it's detented like that and it stays, it's actually just going into float mode, so there's no fluid going anywhere. This one, however, when it's detented, is causing fluid to flow constantly through that valve. This is the one that we need. Okay, so now we come back here and we connect the, the color-coded and the last step of hooking up the hydraulic is to, is to test that we have the input and the tank line hooked up correctly. Here's how we do that. Okay, now with the tractor running, activate that valve that we, that we hooked the hoses up to in the direction that you'd like the valve to stay while you're operating the shadow blade. If you hear the tractor bogging down, that means you have to reverse the hoses. Next, we're going to raise and lower the three-point arms of the tractor to make sure there are no interferences. We've checked for interferences and the hoses and everything are okay and clear. Next, we're going to set this on blocks at the correct plowing height and adjust our floating top link. Okay, in this case, we're going to just use a few four by six blocks to simulate our seven to nine inch height that we want the shadow blade off of the ground. As I set this down, I'm gonna probably have to drive forward slowly so that the shadow blade sets perpendicular to the ground. Watch how it's done. This is a special floating top link. This side here is threaded. And so that's how you adjust it in and out is by turning it. This side here actually floats in three and a half inches. So, Contrary to what you might think, the threads here don't actually do anything. They don't catch anything inside here. There's just a stop that's welded on the inside. So these are gonna be able to move in and out freely. Okay, as you can see, we've adjusted this floating top link now to be at the extent so that there isn't any travel motion within it. So now we're gonna close this gap about halfway so that it has motion both backwards and up. The last phase of the adjustment is to set the lock on the three-point arms so that the operator knows exactly where to drop them to every time. The way we're going to do that is get into the cab of the tractor and raise the arms up just a hair so that they're just putting a little bit of tension on these blocks. Then we'll pull straight forward right off the blocks. You'll notice that this sags a little bit. That's normal. That's the float in action. Okay, so now we have achieved the optimum plowing height for the shadow blade. You'll notice that 
This will be approximately seven to nine inches off the ground. This side will be a little lower, but still clear any common curb in case you were to back over one. Now we're gonna hook up the wiring harness that I talked about earlier. This side comes out of the cab and plugs into the shadow blade. So now we've mounted the joystick onto the auxiliary valve of the machine. As you can see, we have a really nice ergonomic grip here so that you can use just two fingers to operate the entire shadow blade while you still have your hand positioned on the main control for the front plow. Here's a tip. In order to get the ergonomic distance from the joystick, you may use a little bit of manipulation with the big pliers to bend this bracket. The bracket is of thinner material and it can be bent easily. If the operator wishes to have the joystick off to one side or the other, you must then loosen these screws and turn the joystick appropriately to keep the X and Y axis common. Okay, now we need to plug into our power source. Every harness comes standard with this. If your tractor is equipped with one of these plugs, it's called an amp plug, you may plug in just like this. If your tractor is not equipped with one of these plugs, you must plug into this harness that comes with the shadow blade and run these terminals directly to your battery. Okay, we finished our fine tune adjustments. Now we get to try it out. And now we're gonna test out our joystick. We have power on. The first thing you have to do is touch this button at the top. This is the operator present button. That means the operator is present and every function is active. We're going to unfold the plow. Now the side to side motion has two positions. First position is side to side only slightly. Second position is all the way left or right. This is important to note because the shadow blade doesn't go into float until it's all the way over. These secondary positions also activate the return to center function that's handy for stowing. So to activate the angle function of the shadow blade, you just push the joystick forward and back. Now we will activate the rotation so that we can deploy the shadow blade. By simply holding the joystick all the way in one direction, the shadow blade will slowly float down on one side of the plow. To raise the shadow blade automatically and have it go back to top dead center, simply hold the joystick in the other direction for one second. Now as you can see, the shadow blade will raise and stop at top dead center. Going in the other direction, you simply hold, it will go into float mode and slowly drop to the other side. For bench winging applications, I suggest to set the height of the bench plow, to let it float down, and then with quick intermittent adjustments of the joystick, set the height of the shadow blade that you desire for the bench wing to be. This is the laser harness. This is gonna plug right up into the underneath side of the joystick. And these laser beams will be mounted on either side of the windshield. I recommend plugging this in and trying it so that you know which side is left and right. When adjusting the lasers, you'll want to pull over a straight line of the tractor, centering the line on the center of the tractor. Then measure the extent at which the shadow blade sticks out from the center of the tractor. Taking that measurement to the front, adjust the laser beam accordingly. It's pretty sweet. <laughs> 